Today, you're gonna learn about HTTP status code 404, the classic, it's a classic. You're gonna learn about what it is, why it's important, and how to deal with it. We're also gonna do a comprehensive overview of web HTTP protocol basics, just so you have an idea of really what's going on here. I'm Tommy Griffith with clickminded.com. Let's get going. Okay, so before we dive into the 404 status code, I wanna talk a little bit about web protocol basics and how they affect all of your 400 errors. The internet is made up really of two core things, and that's clients and servers, right? So you have clients, web clients, that's your browser, right? Maybe it's Chrome, maybe it's Firefox, maybe it's Safari. If you're a godforsaken human being, maybe it's Internet Explorer. But if you're, <laughs> you're usually accessing the internet through one of these clients, right? Whenever you request a website, you're usually making a request from a web server. You make a request and the server responds. That's happening every single time you're clicking a link. You make this request using what we call the HTTP protocol. Okay, so protocols are really just standards that everyone on the internet has agreed to. It's no different than English or Spanish or Chinese. It's a language that we've all agreed to, right? So a client makes a request to the server, what happens next? Status codes let us know whether the request was a success, a failure, or something in between, right? That's what an HTTP status code is. Okay, so let's jump into each one of these next. So the 100 block, these are informational requests. Uh, the 200 block, those are successful requests. The 300 block are gonna be for redirects, redirection. 400 block will be for client errors and 500 block will be for server errors. 400 block are for client errors, right? That means the page wasn't found, something is wrong with the request, right? So whatever is happening on the client side is the issue. Right, a 400 might be a bad request, a 401 unauthorized, a 403 forbidden. We're gonna talk about the most important ones a little bit later, but the basic idea here is that any, any status code that comes in as a 400 is a client error. Okay, so HTTP status code 404 not found. You've probably seen this a lot out there on the interweb. So the URL being requested was not found. Now it's not true that all 404 errors are bad. This is actually a common misconception a lot of people have. So if a user mistypes a URL or you know, something funky happens, uh, it's okay to serve your user a 404. A lot of people get this crazy idea that they can't have any 404s on their website. That's not true. It is absolutely the right reaction to serve a 404 error if the URL is bad, right? If that page had never existed before, totally fine. Google's not gonna penalize you for this. Serving a 404 is incredibly common. An authoritative page, however, that has a ton of links that used to have content and now it's serving a 404, that's not good. You generally want to redirect old pages that have a lot of old link equity and you wanna redirect that to the most similar page you have or maybe even recreate that page that was being 404 put it on a, put it on a new URL whatever you whatever you got to do but the the general idea here is you don't need to redirect every 404 you have you have to absolutely find a server for a 404 however if you have old legacy pages that have a ton of link value, right? Have a ton of links from external sites pointing to them. You generally want to implement something like a 301 redirect to save that link equity, right? The other thing too to think about here is uh, really nice 404 error pages. So when a user renders a page and gets a 404, sometimes it's good to give them a, bu a bunch of different options, right? Sorry, that page can't be found, but here are some of our best pages, or here's some of our most popular content, something like that. These are all kind of ways that you can solve the 404 error without having to kind of redirect every single one back to your homepage. It's actually a very common misconception. So that's it. That's all there is to it when it comes to 404 errors. So I hope that was useful. If it was helpful and if you learned something today, go ahead and click subscribe down below for even more digital marketing tactics and tips from us. If you're on YouTube, we'd love a comment. Are you seeing 404s? What kind of issues are you seeing? How are you dealing with it? I read every single one. Finally, if you wanna get our comprehensive HTTP status code guide, along with a tool to check all of your HTTP status codes, go ahead and click that link down below to clickminded.com for your free downloadable guide. Thanks a lot.